Welcome back to the Home Inspection Whisper Show. Today, I got a good friend and actually kind of a colleague, agent, real estate agent. We're going to talk about agent and home inspection their home inspector relationships. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Love it. Yeah. So I had you watch a video. One of my friends from a different state, he's in Kansas, I believe, uh, Michael Conrad. He posted a video and I thought it was kind of funny. I'd be like, oh man, this is a great topic. You it know? is a good topic. No, I can't <laughs> yeah. wait to talk about so it. No, that's I have some fun. questions, you know, about the video that's later in the podcast, but you know, this is more just kind of had me think that, you know, the, a lot of home inspectors, they always get upset about the whole agent and home inspector relationship. And I know you haven't had that much of experience because you've been working with us clearly yeah, right. since mm -hmm. what, like almost day one, Yeah, day one, four years, <laughs> day one. That's right. Yeah, man. It's been four years. It's been four years. Oh my, yeah. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> Time just flies. flies, flies, man. Yeah. You, you, you started using us whenever I just started getting out of the field, I think. That's right. And then no. it started growing the business mm -hmm. uh, from an, working on my business, not so much in my right. business. And we started Buffini. That's like the Brian Buffini thing. We started that at the same time too. That's a whole different podcast. That is a whole different podcast, yeah. but that's clearly what we do as well on my team. So yeah, it's yeah. good. So, okay. So starting off first, I have a few announcements. So this is the t-shirt we started selling and I bought it and it shrunk. So <laughs> yeah. So if you're buying these t-shirts from us on homeiw.com, make sure you buy one size up. Yeah, so it fits a little tight. This is going to be a gym shirt or, there you go. or Mary's or Mary's shirt. And then uh, also we do sell our home inspector comments online too on uh, homeiw.com. Also, it is my birthday. So thanks for recording a podcast. I get birthdays. to come here on your birthday. You <laughs> yeah, know, that's awesome. Turn I'm it, excited. Turning 35. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I was in the gym uh, yesterday and uh, a I don't want to call him a kid, but you know, he's early twenties. He called me, sir. Sir, may I use this machine? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, he wanted me to show him like his form or whatever. And he was like, <laughs> he was good. like, thank you, sir. And I was like, that is the first time anyone has ever called me, sir, outside of a uh, professional or like retail environment. Right. And I was like, it's happened. Like I officially look older than. Did you call him son? <laughs> no, I didn't okay, say anything. Good. I just right. said yeah. I was just like I was just like okay, and I walked away. <laughs> well, in honor of your birthday, we've got a delivery coming. It'll be here while we're on the podcast, so we'll get it later. Or should yeah. I open it on the podcast, or should I like? You could. Pause? I don't yeah. know. I mean, they'll knock on the door, so. Or I might we'll just see. like we'll hit like the pause button, and, and the next back. thing you know, if I have a yeah. gift. We'll talk about unless the he doesn't like it, and then we'll just move on. So, yes, <laughs> I'm edit. sure yeah. I will. <laughs> All right, so starting this podcast, you know, about the agent and uh, home inspector relationship. Let's go off with start off with introducing yourself a bit, you know, so they know who you are. You bet. So my name's Kerry Josephson. I'm a member of a team with my partner. We are the Property Joes in Houston, Texas, and we are a relation based business. So we do everything by referral. We don't do any advertising. We do roughly between, I don't know, 55 and 70 transactions a year. We work all over the city. Is that each or with both? Uh, of them? Combined okay. between the two of us. We do roughly this year. I think we're going to be right around 80 transactions. It's Ooh, a bigger year for us. That's, so yeah. that's, a, that's a nice year. What is that? Four transactions a uh... Our goal you know, is four a month. Four a month. So, um, and oh, 80. Wow. I can't even math, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. And the, the, the cool thing about that is, is our price point increased, you oh, know, wow. with the rest of the markets. So yeah. having the price point increase is really nice if you build your transactions so, as well. So this so. is out, this is actually kind of a good topic about, because this is going to go into it a little bit more, a relationship based business. So you started off uh, as a relationship ships base business as the Buffini method, kind of what we follow in the home inspector market, mm -hmm. what we sell on our book online of how we use this relationship based business. What'd you do your first year? My first year. So, okay. Great time to start real estate was the year of Harvey. Mm -hmm. And so I literally started in the business right after the waters receded. Okay. So uh, it was about, I don't know, September time frame, like right after that we, we were digging out and we couldn't sell real estate here for two months after that. Oh. So I volunteered uh, my first calendar year in the business. I think I did two transactions. So by the end of that year, 
but my first full year on the business, I did 25 transactions. Yeah. Wow. So you turned 25 in your first year mm -hmm. and then like by staying in contact with your clients right. and doing the Buffini method of relationship based business, y'all are doing like 80. So, yeah. So, so Joe has been in the business. My partner has been in the business for, I don't know, 15 years. Right. And so he has done, he's followed the Buffini process for, of those 15 years, probably 13, 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. um, I've never done business. I came from corporate. I was getting coaching and following the Buffini method well before I was in real estate. Mm -hmm. And so, um, um, but what I was going to say is, is the important thing is, is that you're not just following up with your clients from a real estate perspective. We are also in touch with our entire database. And so coming to the business with a healthy database was really important. I mean, I could, we want to write down a hundred names mm -hmm. when we start. I mean, I could fill out, if I had to write it down manually, I could do 200 easily wow. market to them. And that's why I had the opportunity to be able to Two, do at least 25 transactions. Yeah. 25 is like a really good year and that's two a month. You know, it's, I'd say even successful or experienced agents are doing like one, you know, average like, agent does five transactions a year. Five. Yeah, that's <laughs> five. Well, I mean, like, yes. what is average, though? Isn't there like 36,000 licensed agents? <laughs> yeah, and there, I mean, you know, yeah. you're it, the whole 80 20 rule in yeah. our brokerage. We're with Keller Williams Memorial. Our brokerage, we've got roughly 800 agents, and 15% probably do all the production. Oh, wow. That's so, a lot. Yeah. Okay. So that was the introduction. And we're, we got some, I got some questions lined up to you and it awesome. ev eventually will lead up to the Michael Conrad stuff, but, uh, we're going to start off with, uh, whenever, you know, one of the biggest questions, a lot of new home inspectors have, or is like, what are, what are you looking for as you, as, as an agent sure. looking for as a home inspector, you know, what are you looking for whenever you're looking for an inspector? I know you introduced us to a, you know, a method right away, but you know, you have to have an, an idea or an image of what you're looking for as an inspector, maybe. You know, as an inspector, obviously competency is at the top of the list, right? I mean, just because you like somebody and maybe they, they can get along with your client, but they don't have any competency, that's a problem. Um, for me, it is really important that that inspector has, a, has the competency, has some type of team behind them to be able to support them. So when they have questions or we're in a scenario where it's something that he, he or she's never seen and I sure haven't seen, we can call somebody right then and there and get some advice. Um, and then, again, I'm in a relationship-based business. These are people that if, especially, obviously, it's a buyer. So when it's a buyer, some of these people are people that I have nurtured for three years. Right. That's a long, wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, literally, and I, I'm not exaggerating. You're friends with that. The, yeah, yeah. I become friends and my, my reputation's on the line. And so that inspector needs to be competent, respectful. They need to be able to have that conversation and explain what's going on and not make everything sound too scary and not minimize something that is important. And then also they need to be able to work with me to be able to, I mean, they're not going to have that relationship with the client 20 minutes in that I built three years. Right. I mean, it's just not going to happen. And so they've got to be able to take their cues from me. Like, Oh my gosh, this guy gets really concerned about the caulking in the bathtub. I mean, I need you to calm him down about that, but we wouldn't do the same thing if the roof was leaking like crazy. Right. No. Yeah. So, I completely understand yeah. that. Yeah. And that's also really good too, you know, by you having a relationship with that inspector where you can say, Hey, this guy is pretty intense or this guy's laid back, you know, you know, talk the, giving us a heads up with that, with that idea too, because one of the things that we have to deal with sometimes is, you know, we run into those, those engineers that they see a crack sure. and they're like, the house is falling down and be like, well, <laughs> right. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, Oh my gosh, the foundation is horrible because yeah. of. I will also say, you know, what I look for is one of the things that I really appreciate about your team is I've gotten in the habit of doing probably two or three things regularly. One is, you know, we check in 30, 45 minutes beforehand. 
they let me know if the client got there early and if they're like sweating it already mm -hmm. and, or, and that, at, when we have that conversation, I give them a heads up and this is literally a minute and a half conversation. This right. is not, doesn't take very long, but I give them a heads up and say, Hey, this is, this is the type of client they are. They're either going to be super laid back. They're going to need a little bit more explanation. They've never bought a house before, whatever. And, um, so, so the inspector has some idea going into it, but I will say I never ask, even if I get there before the client, which is 90% of the time, I don't want to know anything about the inspection. Until I want to hear it with the client at the same time. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. You I don't, don't want them to feel like we're like trying to control what he's exactly. finding or yeah, anything like that. At all. So. No, that, no, that, that's, that's some really good points, you know, and this goes into more of like, it's more of a relationship based business and not so transactional. Right. And I think, you know, one of the biggest complaints I see from home inspectors in like forums and stuff is agents just calling and being friendly, informing them how the client's going to be and be like, well, you're not, not going to tell me how to do my home inspection. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I'm going to do it the same way. Yes, we do it the same way every time, but sometimes explaining a crack to an engineer and explaining it to a crack that's bought a home you know, 25 times Clearly. is two different things. Like that guy doesn't care, you know, right. the, the, the latter, but the first guy, you're going to have to go over every detail in the report. And by you making the transaction move smoother, everybody's happy, yep. you know? <laughs> well, and also because of our license, there are things that the, the inspector, I'll use a lender, for example, a lender, there are things that they cannot talk about right. like future rates and things of that nature. I can I mean, I can convey all kinds of stuff, not necessarily guaranteeing what's going to happen. But, and I would say with the inspector, it's the same thing. Sometimes there are things that, that because of your license, you've got to share with them. Right. I mean, right. and I can stand there and say, and ask the same question. Okay. Um, Joe inspector, a member of your team, how often do you see that? And yeah. then they come back and they're we're like, well, yeah, I see it on every house. And yeah. so it helps put them at ease. Yeah. You know? So I like how you frame it as a question where you're asking the question, like, how often do you see that? Instead of you saying, hey, that's in on every house. Because you can ignore that. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, because if never, you come yeah. out and say that's a statement, hey, that's on every house, you're, well, then you're, well, you, that might, it might not be. You know, you're right. right. Yes. <laughs> you can get yourself in trouble. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. But, Clearly. but you, by you asking the question, you know, to the inspector, the inspector can actually say, well, I see it on any houses between this age. And it's a pretty, pretty normal occurrence. And this is what it normally takes to fix it. You right. know, something like that. All right, cool. I think we kind of hit that you topic bet. pretty good. Um, so you have experience with other inspectors because I remember you telling me about it. <laughs> it's actually always kind of a funny story right. when you have an experience with another inspector because we have like such a set routine and you're, you're so used to how we do it. Um, why do you keep using our services compared to the other inspector? You know, like from your experience with those inspectors? You know, there's a variety of reasons why. And any individual reason seems super small. I mean, it really does. I mean, it sounds like I'm nitpicky, but when you combine them all together, it totally makes sense. I mean, I've got, so sometimes we'll um, have a hard time getting them scheduled. I mean, literally we'll go back and forth for two days. Well, trying with, to get them scheduled, with not with you guys, mm -hmm. not with you guys, but with some of these other uh, inspection companies. And so as a result, you know, I'm watching the clock. I want to get that inspection done within the first two to two and a half days of uh, option period. I like so you I've said two time. and a half. So it has to be in the morning of the third it, day. Clearly. <laughs> yes. No, it does. Yes. Yeah. I mean, or else I'm freaking out. I'm yeah. tense by then. But um, so, you know, getting the, the, the appointment really scheduled. When you guys schedule it, I don't worry about whether or not we've got access, whether or not we've got permission. I mean, you guys will follow up with the other side. And sometimes, I, I mean, I take it for granted that everybody does that. And then I start getting calls like, wait a minute, um, why haven't you scheduled it for me yet from the other inspector? And I'm like, oh, crud, you know, we've got to do that. Right. And, um, and then... Even though typically when I'll use another inspector, it's because the client has a family member or dad has a friend who's an inspector or whatever. Right, right. And that 
that relationship is just not there between me and the inspector. So when I see stuff start to go awry, I can't help, mm-hmm. you know, cause I'm like throwing a flag and he's just yeah, you start plows to, through. Right? You start to see the, uh, the emotional state of your client yeah. start to rise. It's, it's funny. Cause whenever I'm coaching my inspectors, I always try to tell them like this, I say this fact a lot and I don't know if I said it on the podcast too much, but someone buying a home, and someone getting a divorce are actually in the same level of stress. Like there was some yeah. article about that that Mary brought to me, and I thought that was really That's funny. Interesting. So like what you said, there's like a little thing, and you can start to see it, like the train wreck about to happen. Mm-hmm. And you can't do anything about it. Right. And, and that's really important because the little small things do spiral out of control so fast in the real estate market. And that's funny about what you're talking about. It's like the small things, but those small things do matter. Well, and, and it's tough because the because I don't have that relationship and I'm so used to building that relationship with the people that I work with mm-hmm. that I can see like sometimes when I start jumping in and asking the questions that we've talked about the inspector starts to take it personally or there's something weird that starts to happen. Yeah. And um, it, yeah, it's hard to control. That's what I know? was trying to talk yeah. about. And that kind of goes yeah. into like the Conrad video of like what we were talking mm-hmm. about is just like, there's so much emotion even from the inspector sometimes, but like as an inspector, I, I like have zero emotion. I'm like, yeah. you got a question? Cool. I answer it, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and, or they feel like you're trying to interject them on their job. And all you're doing is asking a question and in just a different way. <laughs> and, right. Well, and, at the end of the day, I mean, we're, we all want the same thing for the client, right? right. We want them happy with the property and we want to make sure that they know of any issues beforehand. The, they're fully informed. Right. right. Yeah. And it's not our role to make the decision for them. Right. That's probably one of my pet peeves, which is not a question, but is when the inspector will say, oh my gosh, you need to run or, oh mm. my gosh, this is horrible. Or, oh my gosh, I'll write this so that you can negotiate this out. I'm like, how many times have you had to negotiate this out? Well, no, not. Mm. So that's a problem, right? I mean, the, um, that's actually a really good topic. And this is one of the biggest things I think my father told me whenever uh, he was teaching me how to be a home inspector and it stuck with me kind of forever you don't know where these people came from. You know, like that's one of the biggest things that they, this, whatever they're buying could be a castle. Clearly. No, you that's know what a I mean? Like, point. like, so they could be from low level rent and they save their money the whole time. And yes, the house might not meet your tolerances, but like, that's not for you to decide. You know, what you're to decide is to make sure that they understand that they have bad water pipes, right. bad up panel box, but they're like thinking, Hey man, this is an upgrade. You know? Right. <laughs> or they may have enough money that they love the location enough and they love the property enough that repairing or replacing all the whatever it is, whatever the topic is, is not a big deal to them. Right. Yeah. They're just going to buy it anyways. Yeah. Or, or if they, it's riddled with termites, they're like, nah, I like this house. I like this street that I'm, yeah. I, I know what I'm walking into. So like we don't tell anyone ever to run. And that's one of right. the biggest things I think I try to get that across whenever I'm training home inspectors is like, you don't know where they're coming from. Just give them the facts. That's a really good, give, I like that. Give them your yeah. top three and then go from there, mm-hmm. you know, but, uh, wow. We kind of went off topic. Yeah, that's sorry normal. about that. That's me. Sorry. That's, that's normal <laughs> in my podcast. So my yeah. ADD brain, like just yeah. kind of goes off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but so it's, you know, you're saying it's like just those little small things add up, uh, over a period of time, you know, just, you know, the ease of scheduling, you know, how, how they review the report. That's what I kind of got from that too, as well. Access, right. getting True. access by yourself. That's what it sounds like yeah, too, as truly. well. Because well, and then it, even down to billing, billing is the other thing is that I don't want to have to have that conversation at the location that now, how are we going to settle up? Oh my gosh, I don't take a check or I don't take credit card. It has to be a check and all this stuff. I know, I mean, we've got our rhythm down mm-hmm. and so, and I know you guys are going to reach out to them and let them know. Right. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. We inform them before, at, and after. Like, so, and sometimes like they can't take care of it right then and there. And then we inform them the next day too, as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Billing, you know, there's a lot of little things that have to happen in such a short period of time for it to run smoothly. It's funny. We have all like these little lists. And one time Joe told me this and you might have the number off your head. Um, how many phone call? How many phone calls do you have to make before a transaction even happens on your end? Because oh ours is a lot, you know. And I always yeah. thought he gave me a list, and I was like, "Wow, 
So like all these little things that we do to make your life easier makes our life, you know, it's, it's huge. Like you said, the little things that add up. Yeah, definitely. So uh, this kind of goes into Conrad's video a little bit. This is a, a long question. So, okay. so, so some inspectors out there think agents are controlling the deal too much because y'all are power hungry. And uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, I thought the same thing when I first got into the trade, because just a lot of inspectors out there just talk negative negatively about, you know, agents and never, and I never asked any questions. I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to have this bad relationship right. with the other side, which it should never happen. Mm -hmm. And because you and I talked about this through the Puffini method, you choose who you work with. So if they don't fit sure. into your business model, that's fine. You can use a different company and someone will eventually right. uh, just fall into place if you have a good system. So what I found out is, is, you know, it's not that you're power hungry and we kind of hit this a little bit before it's about uh, you controlling the deal. So it moves as smoothly as possible for your client. And like you said, your client can last what three, you know, up to three years. Yeah. So you want this to be a, you know, an enjoyable experience and not such so stressful because it can be one of the most stressful times of your life. And so I know that was a lot, but what's your opinion on it? You know, you know about power. And yeah, you know, the, the negative power. relationship between agents and right. home inspectors. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will say when I started out, when I first started out, if we're going to talk about giving up our power, I mean, I would walk in, I'd be like, okay, here he is. Talk to him. Here's the expert, right? <laughs> and then, and then I realized, okay, now he doesn't know anything about my client, and it becomes a concern, right? right. And I was putting too much weight on the inspector. And then I probably swung, excuse me, I swung probably the other direction a little bit. But I think at the end of the day, what I value in the inspector and that this whole process is the respect that we have between each other. I mean, I start every um, uh, verbal review off with, hey, look, the inspector is not here to pat us on the back on what a good job we did. He is here, he or she's here to... Tell us the, an overview of the house, what's wrong, what's great, whatever, but really so that you're well informed, right? And so the whole power thing, I mean, I try to give that up personally at the very beginning because I've got a trust with the inspector. And I think that's really the challenge is if you don't have a trust with your the person you're working with, whether it's an inspector or somebody else, you're going to struggle for that power. Mm. And I have a a really, really good feeling that if I'm working with the same person over and over again, we've got that trust, but also with your team, I, there's a built in trust because I know how they're trained. Right. And neither. And I think that they also know enough about me and Joe that they know we're not going to be either a too intense or be too passive or, that we're going to show up or, you know, whatever it is, but there's some trust on our side as well. I don't know if I answered your question, yeah. but yeah. So I don't know, maybe you can relate to maybe some of the other agents that you see in the office uh, about, you know, them being, do you, do you hear them talk negatively about inspectors, about what they've done, you know, in the past, maybe something like that? Well, I, what I can say is, is that when I'm talking to the other side, so the listing agent, oh, that was just a crazy inspector. There's nothing wrong with this. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, hold on. And you, we kind of walk, talk, talk through that. Mm -hmm. And inevitably we get to the point of what has your experience been? Right. right. And, um, I mean, you know, when I was back in, in my corporate days, we would talk about finance, you know, our finance department was the department that kept us from being able to close a deal. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, this scenario, I mean, some agents will look at it as, well, yeah, inspectors here to kill the deal. Right. I mean, that's De just what happened. The deal killer. Deal killer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really what yeah. the way some people will look at it. And I think that those are either new people or they're people that have not taken the time to build a relationship. Yeah. So that yeah. goes back into like how this is not just transactional. It's a relationship based business and you choose who you work with, you know, yeah. like that's one of the biggest things. Like people use us because they know it's going to be the same way no matter what. And then, you know, we talk, we, we talk to people, <laughs> you know. Well, and, yeah. and to directly answer your question, you know, talking about giving up your power and the video you had me watch, to me, it sounds like he's working with the wrong agent. Right. Yeah. Like because he, you guys have the same op opportunity as well. I mm -hmm. mean, um, I mean, you're going to have agents you want to work with and agents that, you probably don't want to work with. 
Right. And I think he's working with the wrong agents. That, I really do. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. friction. Yeah. And, and then maybe even approaching the situation t- too aggressive to, at the beginning, automatically assuming, you know, possibly some, yeah. something, <laughs> something. Well, yeah, and judging the whole scenario by that, those few agents that have acted that way, or maybe everybody does. I don't know. I mean, so another topic you have in there is he was talking about, you know, choosing an inspector you request with, you know, you like a, a certain inspector. So, w- we kind of hit it a little bit already, already, but you know, why do you request a specific inspector such as like Tyler or Brendan? Yep. I know, I know you like both of them mm-hmm. really well, you know, so why do you choose them? And then if you can't have them, would you go to a different company? Gotcha. You know, that was one of the things that he said. He was like, well, you know, the next conversation, if you abide by their saying, Hey, can you give me Tyler or Brendan? Well, you know, what's going to follow up is, well, I'm going to use, uh, a different company and we're like, okay. <laughs> well, and honestly, I mean, his, his comment after, you know, I kind of got over some of the abrasiveness that I, I was thinking about earlier, but is it's a good point. I mean, I, I feel like the point he was making was you've got to have more to offer than just one really good inspector. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I, there, I've got a couple that, um, that, that I really, really would prefer to work with. And it's because we've kind of got our rhythm down. I mean, it really is. And there's so many thing, other things that you as a company offer that if Tyler wasn't available or Brendan wasn't available or jo- I mean, whoever, I would still be like, okay, who, who can I get? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I need, I'm not going to like hang up and then start calling other inspectors. I mean, right. um, for sure. So, but why do I like it is because we've got our rhythm down. We right. really do. There's that shorthand that, like Brendan can look at me and I can look at him and we both know they're struggling and we've got to figure out how to help them through it yeah, so versus can understand. we're blaming each other for why we said something or whatever. Yeah, so and that you can understand like, okay, they're not getting it, you know, something like that. Or maybe I'll say something that's out of line and mm. Brendan can look at me like, okay, I'm fixing to go in because you just stepped in it and, and i'm like all right i mean i can almost i mean i can think of several ex- examples right and, and i know i've done the same thing to him like okay i, I know that they're struggling mm-hmm. and i start stepping in and, and and talking and then he'll pause he'll correct anything i might have screwed up and then he becomes a little bit more delicate on that item because it's super important to him whatever right. it might be yeah. right so uh it's also, so you're saying like he doesn't interrupt you, you know, he, he lets you talk, you know, just mm-hmm. you pause and talk. Yeah. So it, that's one of the things I think is always funny that some of the inspectors are like, well, the agent was giving their opinion, you know, on so much stuff. I'm like, let them, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah. So just, you know, let them talk and then you can go in and say exactly what's wrong or what's going on and then just stick with that. Stick with the facts. Right. Yeah. So uh, we kind of hit this. Next topic, I'm not going to read the whole thing out. You know, I just want to reiterate a lot. You know, my true belief in the real estate market is that this is a 100%, you know, relationship based business, not transactional. And if you treat it as just transactional, you're going to rub a lot of people, you know, the wrong way and your business will not grow as fast. I mean, it probably will grow, but just out of demand. But whenever the market goes down, yeah. Guess who stays around? You yeah. know the relationship state uh, relationship style business. They're going to understand that, you know, we're here to work together. You know, same goal: treat the client well, make sure that they're fully informed, and maintaining a good relationship with everyone: the client, real estate agent, home inspector, listing agent, homeowners, everybody. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of relationships in it, and you can't just be in. Hey, I'm going to do the home inspection, collect money, and move on. Right. You know. Well, I think that relationship's super important, and I've said it now over and over again, but that relationship between the agent and the inspector, like the way I think about you guys, so like, for example, Brendan, I think about, okay, he's on so many of my deals that he probably doesn't do anything else, and I know he does, right? right? I know he does a ton of other stuff, right? I mean, (laughs) but I feel like we're on the same team. Right. You know, we really do walk in there with the same goal and everything else. And um, because of the relationship that we built, you and I built, you know, you know, with with your company overall and then how Brendan and I work together that. It, it, like you said, it's a relationship based business and I'm not going anywhere else. 
Right. <laughs> and you can't, I can't imagine. I mean, literally, I can't imagine you're going to Trying to find another yeah. home inspection company. Exactly. No, I mean, <laughs> that, like, that's crazy. It's, I mean, I like how you said it's like I, you almost think that you're like, he does. He only works for me. Clearly. <laughs> no, I do. Yes. I mean, that, 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 there's no lie to that. Yeah. I mean, when I see the truck and I'm pulling up, I'm like, okay, yeah. Just like always, right? Yeah. Instead of, <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet he's been to all these other houses. No, right. he hasn't. It's only... It, anyway. It's only got me today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Or this week. I mean, I'd truly feel that way. So You'd, you'd be a very poor man. <laughs> uh, you're right. Well, no, I do more business than that. But no, still, I, I mean, yeah. no, but I think yeah. one of the things is, I, and then I do also feel guilty. Yeah. I mean, that relationship is interesting because when I haven't had an inspection mm-hmm. in, let's say, two weeks... Oh, I do. I feel a little guilty. You're like, man, I need to. I need to make sure Brendan eats. I do. No, I <laughs> yeah. totally do. So <laughs> that's uh, funny. Anyway, but yeah. So um, this is kind of off a different topic, and okay. I, I thought this would be really good for the listeners. We're going to close on this one. So, so as an inspector, we have to sell ourselves, not just to you, but to the client too, as well. But in in, in any industry, there's a form of sales, and I think a lot of home inspectors out there fail at the sales part. They just think that they're a home inspector, and that that's yeah. it, you know. And I think that's part of Buffini. It's like, no, you're a, you know, you're a CEO, sales, accounting, and also mm-hmm. a home inspector. But I thought this would be perfect. Uh, question for you because you have a corporate background you know how is real estate and home inspector sales any different than what you experienced in the corporate world do you think there's actually much of a a difference you know in so in the corporate world i had the opportunity to manage some large sales teams and work very closely with um c-level executives both that were buying from me and that were in the same company as i and the one thing that you could tell where, when someone was successful is they might outsource or hire somebody to handle billing. They might hire somebody or hold apartments to handle billing or handle uh, various aspects of their business. But the marketing piece and the sales piece, they were always involved in. Always. Because it was that important. Right. And as you know, sole proprietors or entrepreneurs... I mean, it is just like that. I mean, the minute I think personally I can or the home inspection company can outsource their marketing department and have somebody find leads for them and everything else, uh, it well, we don't have the relationship anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and so then trying to manage through any issues becomes crazy. So I would say corporate feels as though a good corporate entity feels as though it is like crucial to their business. And if we don't feel that way, we won't have the business we could we deserve, I don't think. Yeah, so I think that's actually kind of funny because you just described exactly what I do. You know, I don't really do home inspections as much anymore. I might go right. out there and shoot videos and people are always like, oh, I saw you doing a home inspection yesterday. I was like, well, actually, John was doing the inspection. Right. I'm just showing up and looking at like five problems and then I got to go run and do something else like re- sure. record a mm-hmm. podcast with Carrie. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Happy but, birthday, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but like... Yeah. So what you're saying is, is kind of how I interpret it is, you know, sales is so important, even in from the corporate world that, man, I'm, I'm having trouble sending this into words. But yeah, you can never forget sales. Like sales right. is so even in Buffini, he was just talking about like it's a forever stream, like daily. You have to make five phone calls. Five letters have to be written, you know, uh, to, you know, the thank you letters and uh, make sure that you're always asking your client for more referrals. And, you know, we don't really do that to home inspectors because, you know, they're in the uh, home inspections on the home inspection right, side because yeah. it's not really the place to do it. But it's all it's it's kind of funny what you're th- what you're saying is that it's always about trying to make and make the sale. You always have to sell. Well, and, and, and whether there is a sale on the table or not, you're still auditioning for that next opportunity. And I will tell you. In any transaction, I probably I think we counted it up recently, and there's probably it's less than forty, but there's like between thirty and forty different businesses engaged with every transaction. Oh wow! I didn't know that. <laughs> and I will tell you, I get follow up from maybe one or two mm-hmm. ever. Oh, like the thank you? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we follow up every time. You do? <laughs> yes. No, you do. Yeah. I mean, literally, I get. Zero. I mean, from you guys, I do. But like, if I were looking at everybody else, and so from my perspective, that's a huge selling point because mm. it makes you feel like you're part of the team, right? Right. 
And so it's easy to be, to shine in that area. Right. Yeah. I mean, anyway. Yeah. Speaking about the follow-up too, uh, Carrie will actually even call if something didn't go well or does go well too as well. Oh, so yeah. like, True. yeah. So like if you ever meet a new home inspector in our team, you're like, Hey, you know, this happened, but you know, overall I thought it was really good. And so I could take it and I don't ever take any offense. I literally listen to what you have to say. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go fix it. And you know, I'm going to take care of it. No, I do. <laughs> and I owe it to the team to yeah. bring it up. Like, I can't sit here and complain about it. If I haven't said, Hey, look next time. And I, and I don't ever tell you anything that I didn't tell the inspector. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, unless it was really crazy, <laughs> then I don't want to mess with it. But yeah, so. <laughs> Falling through a ceiling mm -hmm. or something. Knock on wood. We no, don't need no, that to be happening. Not happen. yeah. no, no. <laughs> All right, cool. So we'll wrap it up there. Um, I know my ADD kicked in a little bit there, but I think it was a pretty good podcast. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure that you uh, check out our website again and we sell the shirts and purchase a shirt. It helps out the podcast comments too, as well. We also do a guidebook on exactly how we use that Buffini method in the home inspector world. Buffini is really just talks to real estate agents, but Joe, your partner, man, he was like, he was, he said, Hey, you should do this and try to implement as much as you possibly can. And we did. And our business love it blew up. That's awesome. And then, um, and we actually have a bunch of free downloads online too, on the home IW.com page too. So check it out. So that's it. We're going to wrap up the podcast there and, uh, thanks for listening and catch us on the next one. Thanks. Happy birthday. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>